Good morning. Good morning. Our wonderful people. Welcome, welcome to the program. Let me increase my voice. Welcome, welcome to the program. Happy, happy to see you guys here today, uh, which is August the 19th. Oof, August the 19th of 2023. It's very scary. It's like when you tell someone, oh, I'll see you in six months. Six months is next year. I'm telling you. <laughs> Ooh, okay. But anyway, we well, are happy to be here. Uh, welcome to the program as usual. Help us to share and like and subscribe and do all those uh, nice things that we need to do to get this going. Uh, we cannot uh, forget to remind you that you are a stakeholder. You are part of this. So please, you know, do your part. Share this information. Learn to go to ninasvoice.org. Plenty of information to to um, inform yourself. Uh, Brother Tony is constantly releasing videos throughout the week for more uh, formal education. Mm -hmm. And Sister Didi still offers a one minute talk just for us to start thinking along those lines. So welcome to the program. My name is Mona Chim Saga and I'm here with my wonderful sister. And my name is Equi Simon Okube. Thank you, Sister Mona. Thank you, our viewers. and. Uh, those that help us to share, like my sister has said, uh, while we get a video just to play in the background while you're sharing and so that you don't miss anything in the main discussion, uh, please subscribe. If you have not subscribed, please, if you're just seeing this video for the first time, hit like button. Don't just watch and go away. Hit the like button so that people will see it and YouTube and all the social media will help us to uplift um, the videos so that people, our people can be informed, accurately informed, not propaganda, not lies, accurately informed. You can see what is happening all over the world. If you are not informed, the river will carry you to somewhere. If you are not on the table, then you're on the menu, right? <laughs> exactly. If you're not on the table, you're part of the menu. So they will eat you up, you know. So you need to be informed. Okay, let me join the sharing. Thank you, Sister Mona. When Sekou Tour of Guinea decided in 1958 to get out of French colonial empire and opted for the country independence, the French colonial elite in Paris got so furious, and in a historic act of fury, the French administration in Guinea destroyed everything in the country, which represented what they called the benefits from French colonization. 3,000 French left the country, taking all their property and destroying anything that which could not be moved. Schools, nurseries, public administration buildings were crumbled. Cars, books, medicine, research institute instruments, tractors were crushed and sabotaged. Horses, cows in the farms were killed and food in warehouses were burned or poisoned. The purpose of this outrageous act was to send a clear message to all other colonies that the consequences for rejecting France would be very high. Slowly fear spread through the African elite and none after the Guinea events ever found the courage to follow the example of Sekou Toura, whose slogan was, we prefer freedom in poverty to opulence in slavery. When Guinea decided to issue its own national currency in 1960, France organized a sabotage operation known as Operation Purcell to destabilize the new country. The operation would base itself on two components, causing economic collapse and causing armed insurgencies against the Guinean government. The operation provided for the service de documentation extérieure et de contre-espionnage based in Senegal to create large quantities of forged Guinean francs to flood the country with and bring about hyperinflation and economic collapse similar to the Nazi Operation Bernhard. This would allow the French government to cause significant economic instability. The operation was also to arm opposition figures in Guinea and organize them into paramilitaries that would lead to civil war and the ultimate overthrow of Touré's government. However, the operation suffered a number of leaks and the Guinea government would be able to stop the operation before it happened. Economic imperialism. When destabilizing former colonies did not give the desired results, the French would use other means to ensure it would hold on to colonies and continue to gain from their resources. Since 1961, France would lay claim to the national reserves of 14 African countries, 
These countries were all former colonies, including Benin, Burkina Faso, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Mali, Niger, Senegal, Togo, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Chad, Congo Brazzaville, Equatorial Guinea, and Gabon. The CFA Franc was created in December 1945 when the French government ratified the Breton Woods Agreement and became the currency of Les Colonies Françaises de l'Afrique, or the CFA, or French Colonies of Africa. The French Treasury guaranteed the currency under a fixed exchange rate, but would require that the African nation made a deposit of 50% of CFA franc reserves into the French Central Bank, giving France control over the country's resources. The CFA was later split into the Communauté Financière d'Afrique, or Financial Community of Africa, which included the West African countries of Benin, Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, Guinea-Bissau, Mali, Niger, Senegal, and Togo, and the Communauté Financière de l'Afrique Centrale, or Financial Community of Central Africa, including Cameroon, the Central African Republic, Chad, the Republic of the Congo, Equatorial Guinea, and Gabon. African countries have tried time and time again to liberate themselves from French control, and more often than not, African revolutionaries in former French colonies are met with violent resistance from the French government. The death of Barthélemy Boganda is a perfect example of this. Boganda was the president of the Central African Republic from December 1958 to March 1959. During this time, Boganda cut a lot of ties that the Central African Republic had with France. For example, he founded the Movement for the Social Evolution of Black Africa, a political party dedicated to liberating the French colonies in Africa, specifically the Central African Republic and the French Congo. Boganda was instrumental in the country gaining independence and planned to use his power to liberate other African territories from French rule. In an attempt to stop the Central African Republic's growing independence movement, France arrested Boganda during his 1951 campaign for endangerment. <laughs> Explosives were found in the wreckage of Boganda's plane, and in response, the French High Commissioner suppressed all copies of L'Express printed in the Central African Republic. Another example is the Cameroonian Marxist politician Félix Roland Mumi, who was killed in 1960 when a French Secret Service agent slipped a dose of thallium into his drink in Geneva. Another Cameroonian leader, Um Nyobi, was shot dead in 1958 by the French military. Sylvanus Olympio, the first president of the Republic of Togo, is another significant African leader that would meet his end because he tried to improve his own country and end the ruthless exploitation of the French. In the 1960s, he would try to take his country out of French control by refusing the Colonization Continuation Pact. However, he would agree to pay an annual debt to France for the so-called benefits Togo got from French colonization. It was the only conditions for the French not to destroy the country before leaving. However, the amount estimated by France was so massive that the reimbursement of the so-called colonial debt was close to 40% of the country budget in 1963. Consequently, the financial situation of just independent Togo was very unstable, and in order to get out of this situation, Olympio decided to leave the monetary system set up by colonial France and created the currency of the country. On January 13, 1963, three days after he began printing the new bills, a squad of soldiers supported by France seized and killed the first elected president of independent Africa. Olympio was executed by an ex-French legionnaire the sergeant of the army, Etienne Nassingbe, who, at the same time, received a bonus of $612 from the local French embassy for the success of his mission. Olympio's dream was to build an independent and autonomous country, but the idea did not correspond to the French wishes. Etienne Nassingbe would become president and enforce the monetary system provided by France. Through practices like the CFA franc currency and controlling a large portion of African countries' reserves, France maintains economic control that hampers the growth and independence of these nations. The presence of French military bases in Africa also raises concerns about neo-colonial power dynamics and contributes to political instability. It is important to expose these issues and bring attention to the harm caused by France's actions. The CFA franc, for example, limits the economic choices of African countries and keeps them dependent on France. 
This dependence restricts their ability to address important social and developmental needs, keeping them trapped in poverty. Moreover, France's control over African countries' reserves prevents them from using their own resources to improve their societies, <laughs> making them some of the poorest countries in Africa. This control reinforces economic dependence and prevents these nations from making independent decisions about their futures. Africa cannot develop as long as France continues to see the continent as nothing but a tool to enrich France and advance France's global political influence. To create a fair and equal future for African nations in Haiti, we must shed light on these issues and have conversations that address the historical and ongoing consequences of France's actions. African countries need to regain control over their economies, reserves, and political affairs, free from neo-colonial influence. Hmm. Hmm. This is too much. Yeah, there is too much. Hmm. Listening alone, you're like, what? Yeah, you would think this would be all over the schools, that children will be taught what is going on. No one. When no there one. are puppets, where their puppets are the ones leading us. Mm. They won't mm. be anywhere. They will hide it under the table. Thank God for the youths of today waking up in um, a, 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 a former colonies of that France. Because the youths in the aglophone, they are sleeping. Because lack of information and distraction is not allowing them to focus and do what they need to do. Once they can speak good English, they will think they're intelligent. Hmm. So kudos to youths from so-called Francophone uh, countries in Africa. Kudos to them. They're smart when you listen to them, they're talking, if you listen to the guy, talking and hitting on issues, or talking, oh, answers, answers. What are you talking about? What is answers? What does that even mean? It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Oh, but thank God for the awakening. So this whole uh, theme video has everything to do with that topic today. Serve, serve the colonial masters or serving the colonial masters will never upgrade your status. No matter what you do. Yeah, you may come to America and live in their golf course, but guess what? When you come in there, you'll be playing that golf course by yourself. You know, so and when they are around you, they have to take from you. It's like you have to pay to be their friends. And we keep telling you guys that we really, 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 really have to take back, go back to who we are, retrace ourselves, begin to embrace who we are, and actually heal ourselves from identity crisis. So, according to our sister, Dr. Arikana, a very significant moment has begun. It is an ideological realignment of our economic, political, and social values. The children of Africa have risen. The children of Africa understand the issues, and the children of Africa are speaking. So the world better listen up. Our sister, we know she's been out there educating. When she found this thing out, by the way, we have all our brothers in that AU for years. None of them came out to lament. Once our, once our sister showed up there and saw what was going on, she started granting interviews, telling everyone that have ears what is going on. What is going on in the so-called frank and phony places where people will have to not be here anymore so that so-called France uh, or French people will live their lives and retire at 62 and all kinds of stuff. So whether one envisioned this upheaval as a revolution or interpret it as a symphony of youth-driven uprising, similar to the biblical crumbling of uh, wall of Jer Jericho, one undeniable reality emerges. The foundations laid by 1884-1885 Berlin Conference is now fracturing. Initially rooted in national concerns, the tenderings of this transformation are now stretching across the vast expanse of African continent, enveloping the entire black race. What unfolds before our eyes marks the inception of combination, the end of dominion of history, most sinister empires and emirates. In a remarkable alignment of wills, the African citizen and indigenous peoples stand resolute behind the vanguard of this uprising. In the days and years to come, survival and relevance in the new Africa 
shall be the privilege of those who today stand shoulder to shoulder with the pulsating heartbeat of the African people and not the colonial overlord or the relentless Western imperialist. So join us today as we delve into the very core of history, where we take a look into the lives of colonial puppets in Africa who sabotage all the liberation efforts of their people as they break, up, as they break their backs, pouring water on the hands of those who enslave their people. How they got disappointed when those same colonial masters were quick to cut them down to a size and make sure that they maintain their status as slaves and black monkeys that's what you will always be in their face it doesn't matter what you do you get your people they allow you to bring your child here to go to harvard to go to all the ivory league schools and then when you come in here you know how they treat you right you're just another black monkey driving on american road you're just another black monkey driving in a uh, 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 France, uh, France road. You're just on another African monkey driving in UK's road. And while you can be a prince in your father's land, you choose to enslave your people so that you can go and live abroad. So I will pull up our video for today while my sister adds. Thank you so much. Um, what we are seeing in the show today, you will see that it is not going to give you any advantage to continue to sell your people for the crumbs from the colonial masters. Be it at individual level, community level, national level. In the days ahead, the people that have been selling our people, sabotaging all their efforts to be free, we have to pay some prices. We are not sure what the price will be. We are not sure to what extent that payment will be. There is no more business as usual as the children of Africa have risen. Thank you. Let's see what's going on. We'll try to play this video ahead of time before we're not going to, so that those that are going out will understand that you will need to separate and you understand what to do. So this Nina's instruction is like war instruction for those that are sincere and want to be part of what is going on in a way that you will be safe, not just jumping around and making noise. Thank you. Yes, in the final analysis, the peoples of Nigeria who are living in the torment of unitary Nigeria will have to step forward to, begin, to join the task of salvaging themselves, saving themselves from impending doom. There's already bad weather. There's already rain falling and destroying things. But the one that is now the deluge that will come if we fail to arrest the situation is why we're making this uh, short appeal to open your eyes to where that calamity is coming from. We have identified that constitution of Nigeria as the source of all your misery and the collapsing environment in which you live. And so we we are pointing you to uh we, we we wanted to be able to identify who the enemy is in this complicated uh, battle the enemy is anybody that subscribes to that uh, constitution that 1999 constitution he could be some a candidate contesting election he could be political party the, all the political parties in Nigeria subscribe to that constitution. It could be supporters of the candidates. It could be people who go to vote in the election under that constitution. They are the ones, but, but if you were looking for who, because some are who doing, some are the deceived. 
the ones who are deceiving the others are the ones who swear to defend and uphold that constitution. They know because we have engaged them. We have told them these things to say the people are dying. They, 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 they grab that constitution with all their might because of the profits they make from it. They know that you are going to die. They know you are going to get more miserable. They are not explaining to you. They don't want you to know that it is because of the profit they will make for themselves. Governors every month, 5 billion, 10 billion for them and their families, to which they are not, on which they are not accountable to you for how they spend. In the 48 months, they will be there four years or eight years if you are unlocked 84 months. Or is it uh, 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 48? No, 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 96 months. And so those are the people tormenting you. The ones who subscribe to that constitution, the ones who swear to defend and uphold, the ones who go to election political parties, all of the political parties. Now, what are you to do? What are you to do? Separate yourself. In the days ahead, Ninas will be drawing a line, will be making an altar call. All of those who stand with that constitution on one side, all of those who stand with Ninas to take down that constitution right at this time on the other side. That, that's what you will find in Nigeria in the days ahead. Because we can't continue like this. And uh, the torment has come to where those who, uh, you know, who want to save themselves must now stand up and help take down that apartheid constitution that uh, bring uh, all these uh, torments. The ones who swear to defend and uphold that constitution are committing treason against <laughs> the rest of us. They're committing an offense that that could be punished with any kind of punishment the mob can inflict. But they are committing treason because they are hanging onto a document that uh, implants our signature fraudulently, empowering themselves to do what they are doing, whether it is stealing they are doing, or it is uh, the killings they are doing, or it is the other things that they, they make profit from uh, that uh, they are refusing uh, to do. We must separate ourselves from from them. They are, the, they are the enemies of the people. The other enemies are only the full idea that come to kill you are able to get to you because that constitution is in place, still in place. So it is your it is your twin brother, it is your nephew, it is your sister that is part of upholding that constitution, going to, you know, renewing the life of that constitution that has brought the full idea that is killing you. If it is hunger, that is, if it is poverty that is uh, grinding you, if it is, uh, if it is uh, electricity that is destroying your business or lack of fear, Whatever it is that is tormenting you, look for those you can reach, those you know their homes that are subscribing to that constitution, whether they are doing political party or contesting election or swearing to defend and uphold that constitution, having one, they are the ones, you know, they are the ones that are they are, um, they are the ones that are putting you through that torment. Mm -hmm. So by this short broadcast, just dress back, inform other people. Send this information to everywhere it can get to. If you want to be a part of solving that problem, we are going to make a formal invitation and people are going to come to take the specific steps we're going to be directing in the days ahead because the time is here to solve the problem that's been, you know, uh, uh, tormenting us for decades. We have built sufficient consensus against that constitution, sufficient consensus against the proprietors of that constitution, those who benefit from that constitution and condemn the rest of the people uh, to the miseries they live in, you know, uh, so that together we will take down that constitution and arrive at new, uh, you know, uh, constitutional protocols that we shall determine in self-determination, ratifying by referendums. I think we'll stop here. Thank you. It's so funny how someone came with the truth. <laughs> we have 10 million churches. Someone came with the truth, abundant truth, not asking you for money, not shouting on the radio, not doing any of those things. And our people say, over their dead body will they follow what he's saying? 
and we are watching why mayhem take place in our land and people are just running around thinking they can it's unbelievable it's unbelievable it's <laughs> unbelievable yeah, you can't even imagine bible, it. bible is happening in our lifetime again i'm telling you in the tk people know they hear word and they have all the education they have all the degrees they have all the things they have all the you know internet access they have social media access but they refuse they said over their dead body can i know this you know, this truth, this liberating yeah. truth, it's unbelievable. We'll see how it will end. You know, for people that don't want to hear, we know that you know, even back as children, they would tell us that Mr. Mrs. in T can and he had better mood but all of a sudden their eardrums will open. So we are praying that our people will not be that doubt that they will wait till they are six, uh, six feet under for them to start making sense about what God has given to us, about the work that somebody has did while you were sleeping, while you were living your life. Some people went ahead of you and did the work that's supposed to give you freedom and give you freedom abundantly. But no, you want to fast and start looking like a toothpick with a dry mouth. You want to blame it on your mother and your sister and your organ and everybody else. But the government that was set up to make sure that you don't succeed. Our brother Fashole Fash Fallership. Oh God. Uh, for for last for day. For last day. For last day. Sorry, my sister. We uh, you can mess she up be, my name. She be a sister. It's, it's a sister, actually. It's a sister. Okay. So it says education, formal education is not necessarily enlightenment. My sister, you can say that again. My mother told us that a long time ago, but you know, for years they deceived or they made it sound like it's a, a measure of IQ. Mm -hmm. When they can speak English and they don't know their left from right, and you will stay mute and build a, a, a pyramid. Mm -hmm. So we, we know, my sister. So thank you so much for that uh, information. Please continue to help us to share uh, and like and subscribe because they are blocking this. They want us to spend our time looking at things that will never, um, you know, foster our growth. It's always things that wouldn't matter at the end of the day. So we know the games that they are playing. So thank you uh, so much for that input. Uh, yes, as my sister pulls up the PowerPoint. So you see, the beauty of what is going on is that the universe or God, whatever you call it, that thing that is outside you, is not waiting for you. It's not waiting for your ignorant self. As you are ignorant, pretending and saying, I must remain ignorant. I must <laughs> remain in TK. I must remain stubborn. I must not listen to truth and embrace truth so that I can move. The universe is not waiting for you because it's not about you. No, things it's not are true. happening in places that we put these things we are doing right in the center of what we are, where we're going. It does not depend on you. you and thank God for that. And thank God for that. The only thing we are saying is that you still have time to be part of this. So that tomorrow, when your children and grandchildren ask you, father, mother, what did you do? What was your role when this type of epic moment was going on? What did you do? <laughs> I hope you will not lie to them. Because we have internet now. We have videos. We have evidence. There we go and check and see that while we were discussing important issues that will liberate them. You were busy dancing Kokoma on social media. You are busy dragging non-issues. Some will say, oh, Ojuku brought war. Ojuku did not bring war. Hey, what is, what are you doing today to liberate your people? <laughs> so we go there, where is Siago? I'll be dancing as if you see a time to dance. It's not about your ego. It is the people that are dying. The entire black race, the Nina's project is a big project. It's not one person's idea. It's a divine project. And it's sweeping across everywhere. Because that's the only solution out of this evil that we have found ourselves. Please go ahead, my sister. Absolutely. So serve the colonial masters and they will never upgrade your status. And we told you guys this over and over again, that as long as we live in the estate called Osma Danfodio's estate, that's what they called it, that we will never, we will never, 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 
you know, allow us to be in charge of our future. So we will never, ever stop reminding you guys of where you are. Because for years, they lied to us. You know, they told us, oh, African leaders are corrupt, or they can't get anything done. When they are the ones that did all the killings, they are the ones that killed those that wanted to improve Africa. They are the ones that, you know, destroyed everything about Africa. But they are keen to show you black people as evil on TV. Black people are the ones doing all the disappearing of people. Black people did this. But evil, evil how like this, the biggest evil that even devil himself cannot imagine, they were all committed by these people. But they turned everything around. They will recruit one of your own because you know you see uh, from our powerpoint you see how they divide us into class the people working for them where they are and it's not the first time that they use this they even use this here in america where when the uh, irish people were coming here because they were treated as slaves where they are in their land they were treated as slaves the english people were treating them as slaves when they come to america the English people that live in America didn't want anything to do with them. All of a sudden, somebody got a great idea that they can call them white. And then now they can begin to help them to subjugate the blacks. This thing has been ongoing for the longest time. So when we say that we need to be informed, well informed, so that we can understand in here, my, my sister will say to understand in here what is doing you. Just that you're not blaming it on your father or your mother, you're not going to church and sitting there and crying on to Lord. The Lord will never listen. You guys are sabotaging him. He's giving you guys a roadmap on how to get out where you are, but you want to waste your time and go to church every day and waste your time just doing what you need to do. So today our objectives include appetite and local system in Africa. Africans who swear to uphold the colonial system in Africa, which also we call the puppets. Africans who are fighting to protect the colonial interests because they benefit from it. That's why you will see it's only in Africa that a president will be there for 100 years. Even when they are peeing on themselves, when they have uh, Alzheimer's, they are still president. And they know that they are not able to perform the job. It's all about having an entity there that will you know, ensure their so-called interest. The fourth objective is separate yourself from the enemies of the people. Ninas, like we said, in the days ahead, will be calling for us to separate, for us to know who, you know, which one, which, where do you belong? Which role do you belong? And of course, we cannot end without pointing out the Ninas Five Point Agenda so that you know these things. These are the things that we should be demanding from those claiming to be ruling us. These are the things that we should be demanding from our brothers and sisters in our neighborhood that are politicking on our behalf when hunger is killing us. So understanding this five point agenda will help us in the days ahead to push along for what we want. And then of course, we cannot end without the spotlight on the wisdom of our ancestors. So let's look at appetite and colonial system in Africa. We know what they did with this, right? We know how it happened in South Africa. A lot of us witnessed, thank God for TV. At least they were showing the what they were doing on TV. And these people have made us so insensitive that even when you're witnessing things of the highest level of wickedness proportion, no, I don't no, know I, is that, go ahead. Sorry, it's not even in the past. Apartheid is still going on. They only tried mm -hmm. it in South Africa. South Africa was a testing ground. That thing they did in South Africa is what they spread in the whole Africa. The colonial system that you're talking is apartheid. And as my sister is going on to break it down for you, you understand. Well, we tell you that that's what is going on everywhere. So don't think the apartheid is over. 1999 constitution is the apartheid constitution. You're right. 11, You're right. Uh, 11 agreements, 11 uh, uh, agreements that they put on francophone countries, 14, 14 is apartheid. Every, you listen to my sister, you understand. Let her break it down for you so that you understand why we say everything is the same thing. Please go ahead. It is the same thing, my sister. Thank you for emphasizing. It's definitely the same thing. You know, they always trick us, right? They want you to think Nigeria is the most populous country in the whole world and they're the smartest people, they're everywhere and this and that. For you not to pay attention to what is going on. You are right that appetite is everywhere in Africa. So we know it's a system of segregation and discrimination based on ethnic and tribal criteria. So they always want to they let you know they're ahead of you. And it's meant to hold the people perpetually down and backwards. If you're not fighting your brothers and sisters, you're there fighting for food or fighting for something else, when they can easily fly off 
with your resources while you guys are fighting, right? Because you have to sit down, organize yourself, understand yourself to say, oh, here he's here is a common enemy that we need to fight against. No, they ensure that all of you are together. I mean, fighting fighting yourselves. They go ahead and impose an apartheid uh, document to protect colonial interests and enforce colonial policies, which we know what these things means. In our uh, lifetime, we've seen a lot of killings, uh, stealing, corruptions, and can we even talk about impunities? When we hear interest, because we, from where we come from in Africa, we don't know that interest means stealing some, somebody's resources and calling it your own. We thought your interest means you have your own thing. And they've been imposing this, their so-called interest. If it means that the whole community will be wiped out for their interests to be preserved, that's what it is. This week, thank God, uh, thank to our uh, Kenyan brothers and sisters that are fighting the British Army for the, we are talking about apartheid. There was it's still happening as of yesterday. The kind of thing they have done to the indigenous peoples in their land where they claim to be training is unbelievable. So the parliament in Kenya is actually calling them to books and trying to start an investigation, which has never happened before, because they tend to get away with these things. In their eyes, you don't count as anything. You are just another thing to be disposed of. They and use you, our people. Go ahead. And you know the funniest thing? When they are doing whatever they are doing, our people that are not following what is actually going on will be calling their leaders clueless. This one is clueless. They are puppets that are doing what they told them to do. They are not clueless. They know what they are doing. They are being paid to enslave the people. Stop calling them clueless. They know what they are doing. Because when you call them clueless, you will not take them, you will not hold them accountable. And you, you will not make them to be responsible for their actions. You think they are clueless. That's what is going on. No. They know what they are doing. They do know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Like sister, sorry, I just went no, on. absolutely, my sister. They do know. They do know what they're doing. They're serving the colonial interests. They elevate a favored ethnic group to the superior to be superior to others and condemn others to a miserable fourth class. So, like I mentioned earlier, if you look at the for you know they're always the first. The white colonizers are the first, and then whenever they do have a favored ethnic group, then they will be the second. And then the third will be the puppet leader that they will use to preserve their interests. And then the indigenous peoples, I don't even think they have any class. Indigenous peoples to them are those that need to be disposed of. You know, they are disposable uh, entities that, you know, nobody asks for them. There's no justice for them, nothing for them. Yeah, they will use to fight war now when they have any war that they have cooked up. That's true. They, they will now to fight them. war. I use them to go and fight the war that has no business for them. That they have any no business. But that's another way to dispose of them now. Yes, now <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> you that's know here now. Way. We are told that doing slavery that they will use uh, 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 Africans and set fire on them to do uh, uh, bonfire. Uh, bonfire. Just do bonfire. Can you imagine? And then after somebody will say, "Oh, African ancestors are bad. African ancestors, they are evil. You have not even heard evilness. Mm -hmm. You have not heard. You have mm -hmm. not heard." And that's what we don't Your want ancestors to be a twin twin gum, my dear. You haven't even dear, heard. <laughs> our ancestors cannot even imagine some of the things the ancestors of these colonial masters have done. So please, if you don't have information, stop talking to our people. Just, just go and sleep so that people will not be distracted with your misinformation. It's insane. So let's look at Africans who swear to uphold the colonial system in Africa. Like I said before, we call them puppets. Over time, they begin to see themselves better than their subjugated people, right? In our land, they will even pretend, like all my, even for those of you that don't understand English, our people will go to the town, hang with the government and all that stuff, and then during Christmas, they will come to the village and become the only lights. Yeah, big boys. <laughs> the big boys, you know. <laughs> so only when the big light is in town. In the, 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 the big boys. Yes, big boy. <laughs> all your people are dying, full line is leading you. Yeah, big boy. <laughs> it's insane. So that's what, and they like it that way. They don't want anything to change. No. When our people are being kidnapped, they will pay for the so-called Nigerian army to bring them back to their village, yeah. and they say, "This is how we do it." Yeah, this is how we. This do is it. how we do it, and oh. people are clapping for them. No sense. So they pretend not to understand what their people are going through, and if we see it, they may come home and turn on the generator and give you some, you know, alcohol just for you to 
drink away your sorrow. Yeah, I share some uh, plastic rice and engine oil to you. So you eat and go and die. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because it's cheaper for them. They will buy houses in white elite neighborhood with stolen wealth. Because that will work on them. Think about all these years. They claim that Africa is African leaders are corrupt African leaders, but they will allow the same leaders to come here and invest in properties. They will allow the same leaders to come here and do all kinds of stuff, hide money. As we are speaking, Switzerland has the most stolen money in Africa, but guess what? They are ranked as the most, what is the word? What is the opposite of corrupt? I guess uncorrupt <laughs> person, country in the whole wide world. When they are taking resources, stolen from other places and keeping in their land, they will allow their children to go to Harvard and Ivy League schools. We saw our African-American brothers and sisters screaming, claiming that the affirmative action never helped them. It was actually the black people that you're seeing there came from overseas, and most of them are children of politicians. It wasn't black Americans. A lot of them were not black Americans. It's more so people that came from overseas, and they would pay for 10 years in advance because they so can stay there and, and keep failing classes for 20 years before they get one degree. They will go and marry lower classes or class of white so they can belong and boost their class. They hate us for that. I said that's why they hate us, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sad. It's sad. They end up being enslaved, trying so hard to please their superior, their wife's uh, uh, super spouses. They're, she doesn't know how to cook. They will begin to cook. She doesn't know how to wash. They will begin to wash. She doesn't know how to do anything. The only thing he got that he's walking around with someone lighter than him. That's, that's awesome. all he got. They tend to overcompensate by staying away from their families. They will pretend. The whole lot of them will pretend. They will move away, live close by. And hang out and hang out we do hang out with them. Oh. And we know that the white kids never seem to understand the struggle of these misguided black kids. They will never, they will never understand. So they try to dilute the identity to impress people who will never be impressed no matter what. So you see, not only have you done wrong to your people, now you're doing wrong to yourself hmm. because you refuse to do the right thing. Exactly. You take your resources and bring it somewhere else to develop and then leave your people in abject poverty and you think it is well with you. Hmm. You think um, it will be well with you and your children. Abomination. Um, That's why they're turning to drugs now. That's why they're turning to, to drugs. They will never be integrated because the white people understand as, understand as integration is you abandoning who you are to embrace their culture and tradition. They know you're a traitor. That's another name for it. Yes. You're a traitor. There's nothing else to call you. If you're willing to abandon who you are and become somebody else, you are no use to humankind. Yes. So you, you are not. You are not. So they don't get to use it to do anything. I remember a young African-American guy that went to, to Germany for, he's in the army or something. He went to Germany to you know a club and they were asking him, where are you from? He said, I'm from New Jersey. The white guy said, you're from where? Because he said, you don't know who you are. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's how he began to do his DNA. What? He said he never, they all walked. He said everybody left him there and said, you don't know who you are. If you are think you you're from New Jersey. Hmm. So now they have yeah. rebranded slavery in the name of westernization called civilization. They are giving our boys hormone therapy. So that they can become girls. Because these things, that's the thing. Why you guys are sleeping, these people have been putting things in place to destroy you guys. Jeez. It's not enough that they're still in. They want to for you guys not to exist. One after the other. One after the other. If you decode this one, they'll bring another one. If you decode this if, one, it's already lined up. Yeah. This chemical castration did not start today. It was during the during the time of Kissinger, Henry Kissinger, the former state uh Secretary of the U.S. When they were lining up all the things that they would use to destroy black communities, he came up with that they should turn the men there because it used to be back in the days, they would cut off their private parts and keep it in their house. A girl, a white girl came out and did a video how her ancestor told her that's what they did. They actually mm. showed her one, one that was kept. So it used to be that anytime they want to go after black men, they would take his private part, cut it off and keep it in their house. 
So now they couldn't do it anymore. So as they were listening during Kissinger's time, they were listing the kind of thing they were used to keep them, make sure they are not reproducing. They came up with making sure that everybody there now, all the boys now want to be girls. So this thing that you're seeing did not start today. Somebody has been putting that into place to make sure that our boys are now don't want to be who they are anymore. Put hormones in water that people drink. And people are, people are not understanding. And then as you begin to try to figure out what's going on, they will make you feel like you have 20 million followers, mm. distract you from what is going on so that you can be controlled from the main issues. Your people are dying, you're busy selling makeup. Your people are dying, you're busy dancing naked. Your people are dying, you're busy talking trash. All in the name. And they will engage these people. That's what they will do. They will all this fake, fake uh, book or whatever yes. they call themselves. Yes. They will alert everybody to go and watch things yes. that will never improve their brain. Yes. It's part of the strategy, people. It's part of the matrix. It's what they, it's what they do. When you discuss evil, they will say it's against their community guidelines. <laughs> when you the say something that, that they is do. important. If you, yes, if you discuss the evil that they do, if you try to expose them, mm -hmm. it will be against their community guidelines. Everything is against their community guidelines. Yeah, if it's, if it's you exposing and informing your people, it will be against but if you are leading your people towards stupidity, damnation, they will promote it. They will promote it, populate uh -huh. it everywhere we spread, and they will be sharing. And your people will help to share. The madness will catch your people because they too will be carried along because they are making money. It's all part of the strategy, people. You weren't meant to be here. And we like to show and tell when we are doing what we are doing, right? Because we know for. Yes, we've been sold like what I call multiple discussion and bipolar discussion. People mm -hmm. are talking about things they know nothing about and shouting over it. This is how when we tell you that, that the matrix is set up to be against something that is good, some people may think we're exaggerating. So I'm trying to pull up a, um, a thing that happened online when they are talking about uh, Harry. You know, since he married that black girl, they can't stand her mm -hmm. yeah, or stand him. They are busy trying to figure out all the things they can say wrong about him because he's busy. People calling their child a monkey. To that calling person. their child a monkey. So I literally put this thing on here. I don't know if you guys can see it. They yeah. were making all bad comments. Everybody was like, oh, he's sad. He's a sellout. He's a criminal. He's this. He's that. I just innocently put just to see what will happen. I said, we love you, Harry. Immediately, they blocked me. They Ooh. said, this comment violates our community guidelines on bullying, bullying and harassment. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody is now bullying and harassment. <laughs> our people, are you seeing it? This so, is evidence. Mm -hmm. We screenshot it to show you. Because some of you don't understand. I don't know. Like they say, how many times do they talk to you before you begin to develop sense? But you know what? Those of you that are refusing to develop sense, no problem. This yeah, but look, look at all that comment. He said he's always sad and he destroyed his life for nothing. They allowed that one to post. No, don't they said, I've post. seen pictures of condemned prisoners who don't look as grim as he does. I predict ulcers and had troubles in his near future. And nothing. Nothing. They posted it's okay for their community. It's okay for their community. Then when I wrote, we love you, Harry, they said this comment violates our community guidelines on bullying and harassment. Are you people seeing it, my people? So Are you seeing this it? This is a world that we are in. For us to understand that we have been set up, this whole thing is a game. It's a game of who will win and how they will take over, continue to take over. It's not even bad enough that they've taken everything. We are just surviving on our own. We are now the workers for them. It's still not enough for them. They want more. They want more blood. They, more, they want more blood. So I'm glad I was able to share that because this is not the first time. They are playing games. They will tell you, oh, 20 people followed you. They will minus it from the other ones. And you're trying to see who left. Nobody left. All kinds of games. When you join this fake book or whatever they call it. To me, that's what should be the name, fake book. Yeah. That's all they're doing, fake yes. book.
So I will pull up, uh, go back to pull up my uh, PowerPoint again. Sorry about that. I just wanted to ensure that I share that with my people so they can see who we are dealing with. Yes. So until we are well informed and 10 steps ahead of our enemies, they will continue to take us for granted. They will continue to take us for granted. Go ahead, my sister. Yeah, exactly. And they will make our people very poor. As a result, they are under pressure to make it. And they will do everything. Because uh, Facebook is monetizing them and fake book is monetizing them and all that. So please, our people, wake up. The essence of this thing we're doing is to get you informed. So you don't fight the war that is, that there's no, like you don't have any business fighting. Because they will cause war, cause conflicts. Guess who we fight them? Africans. Fighting to protect colonial interests. Does that even make sense? Is it not the height of Stockholm syndrome? You're defending the thing that is tormenting you. Mm. Fighting with the people that did not offend you. People that did nothing to you. Leaving the people that are doing something to you to fight the people that did nothing to you. What type of sickness do you call it? Please, our, our viewers, can you put it in the in the comment? What type of sickness do you call this? Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> can you imagine? Fighting was to defend and uphold your torment. The fear of what? Or ask me, somebody should. What business? do Africans have fighting in the first and second so-called world war. Meanwhile, it's European tribal war. The children of Esau are always fighting in their midst because all they do is fight. The Europeans fight. That's all they do. They don't have peace. They don't know peace. When they fight, they will connect with their children or the, terror the terrorist uh, uh, descendants of Ishmael. And they will continue to fight and terrorize the whole world. Ask me, so the children of Jacob, what business do you have fighting in their war? They will get their tribal war and tell you it's a world war. <laughs> How can it be world war? Mm. How can you fight to defend col colonial rule and help them expand to new areas? To steal more resources. Have you seen that we are the ones doing ourselves? Like some people will say in this sense. Because of ignorance. That's why the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. You are ignorant. As a result, you are helping to uphold the system that torments and kill you. After the so-called World War II. We are Africans helped to fight to liberate France from German forces. France massacred the Africans because they demanded equal treatment with white soldiers. They killed them for daring to demand it. In 19th and 20th century, France, this France you're seeing, used a group of African soldiers. They recruited from Senegal and other French colonies to defend so-called French interests in Algeria, Vietnam, Caribbean, Madagascar. Oh, these things did not stop, start now. You're just not studying. Washing, my dear. Yes, you're not washing. just studying what you need to study. The time that you're supposed to go and study to understand what to do, you are spending doing night vigil in the church with your pastor that is having problem with his wife. Rather than be with his wife, because he's having problem with his wife, he will keep people in the church every night <laughs> so that they will keep him company. Where did this virus, tell me where this virus did not spread to? No wonder the former colonies of, of France are, are, are seriously desperate now to break away from the shackles and hardship of French, uh, French uh, neocolonialism. They are very serious about it. 
They are moving. They are not just talking. They are do as they are speaking. They are doing it. As they are doing that, they are doing it. It's like some part of that deleted. They are not just talking. Are we talking about King Leopard? Yes, King Leopard of Belgium. He used a band of African soldiers to brutalize other Africans for robber extraction. He keeps going back and forth. The other one he pulled was okay. For robber extraction. Yes, this one. Italy did the same thing. Used the same African soldiers to defend Italian interest in Somalia, Ethiopia, Libya, and what have you. This things that did not start now. So that those that are thinking is politics. At the time I was saying something, I made comments on, on Facebook about Haiti. Somebody said, oh, that, an ignorant person. People we can call ignoramus. Jumped out from somewhere. Oh, no, it's political thing that is happening. Don't call it anything. We know that some people went to school to destroy their brain. We know. <laughs> some, of us, some of us that um, pre we are prepared for this battle we went to get informed so that's why we are different from some of you because there's a, a project to be done as we are in their school our eyes were open we went to the school with our eyes open we opened our eyes like this everything I remember when we like any topic you bring my eyes are open I'll collect it from you and start teaching you. Except I'm not in that class. I will not allow you to miseducate anybody that I'm inside. Go and ask them. If we don't write it, I'll ask you, does it make sense? That thing you wrote there, does it make sense? Be it in church, be it anywhere. I will ask you questions. I remember at the time my pastor was praying that I should not come to church. <laughs> I should not attend Bible study. Because I will not let him to misinform people. If he talks, I will ask him questions. Mm -hmm. Begin to ask those your stupid pastors questions. Go and read the Bible. Ask the question. Don't carry your brain and go there and allow them to brainwash you and misinform you. Go and read it yourself. And when they start talking jazz, you begin to ask them questions. I didn't say you should fight them. Just ask them questions. My pastor will say, oh, I used to do extra study before I come, because I know that you are waiting for me. You said, ah, Sister Pat, you didn't ask questions today. I said, there was no need. You didn't say anything that needed me to ask questions. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what it ought to be. Not going there to give them your brain, and they wash it clean, and give you an empty brain to go home. With. No, that's not the essence. In 19th century, we are talking about what these evil people did. Britain, used Egyptian military to beat down and colonize Sudan. They also committed, they used them to commit world's most, like worst genocide in the world, the Biafran genocide. That's the worst genocide. A genocide that they starved 2 million children to death. And pretend like nothing happened. And pretend that nothing happened. And somebody wants us to sweep it under the, under the rock and move on. You don't know what is coming for you. You don't have an idea. You have no clue. You don't even know this generation, these survivors of that genocide. You don't know how prepared we are. You, don't, you have no clue. You don't even know. You have no clue. You think it's to come to social media and be making They've been poisoning you. They thought you would lose your money by now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <My days. laughs> we had extra as we are coming into this world. Mm. We had extra. If you poison one section, another section will take over. Because you know, we don't know how we prepare. We don't know how we, prepare. We, don't know how we, come. Ah, we came with the maker, the one that made us. We are with him. Britain committed atrocity 1967-70 they want to sweep it under the rug and move on with one nigeria <laughs> we say fa 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 foul 
Zabodaya said, fa, 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 fa. You must come on the table. You must discuss it. No matter how long you wait, my people say, na mili doneju, dolo wanketa. The water that is in small plates is for the dog to go and drink. No matter how you say, I don't want to drink it, do your tell. Eventually, you can drink it. You see that discussion? We are going to have it. We will have it. We are not carrying guns, carrying bullets, no. There are some children that when you beat them, when they were small, they will hold you. You that you are beating them, you are the one that will be tired. You will beat, beat, beat. Your hand will start paining you. Start begging them. Please, man. My dear, are they, are they even ready? You saw that our sister that was on that TV show with that white guy. <laughs> one one round of talk, he wants to start fighting. Exactly. English, one hand and say, with you also. So I'll just mm -hmm. echo boxing. I'm telling you. So you see, we are, that's what, we are not going the route you want us to go. Because before now, you just do push us. We get angry, get emotional, carry gun that we don't even have. And start fighting. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. No, we are not going that route. I will check. Bring. Intellectual warfare. Intellectual Come warfare. Out. Come yeah. out. Let's we do have it. gone to school. Before, our ancestors didn't go to school. So you can baboozle them with your English and baboozle them with your lies and propaganda. That thing you said we didn't know, we have gone to study it. We have come into class with you. We have learned together. All we are saying is come to the table so that we have a discussion. That's what we're saying. <laughs> you are throwing tantrums, running up and down, doing all whatever you're doing, killing people and doing that because we are many now. I was a legion. We are coming in multitude. So it's not the time that you kill Thomas Sankara or kill that one, pick that one and kill. No, we are more in number. We are up to 90% of the population. Our people are informed now. The youths are informed. So stop throwing tantrums, colonial masters. Come to the table. Let's have a conversation. Yes. This world can be enough for all of us. The resources on this earth is enough for all the human beings. More than enough. More than enough. If people will just stop stealing, killing others, stop the ethnic cleansing and all the nonsense, all the war, and stop it already. Let's discuss. We will tell you we have the intelligence to manage the resources. Because Hello? we are close to nature. We will tell you how to do it. They call their rule when they were using the Egyptians because we're talking about how Africans have been fighting war to protect their colonial interests, protect colonial interests and protect their colonial masters. They will deceive them. They say, oh, this is Anglo-Egyptian rule. <laughs> Thinking, making you think that you are partners with them. Why they are cutting the shot from London? You are in Egypt sending your people as foot soldiers, pilots to go and kill Biafrans, to go and kill Sudan, Sudanese. At the end, what did they do? They took over Egypt from <laughs> parasites. Mm. This is the same thing they did. They're still doing in Nigeria. In this, what they call the Anglo Caliphate or Anglo Fulani rule in Nigeria, because that is what is going on in Nigeria. I don't care how all these uh, small, small children that are following APC, you know, all these political talks that APC have here and there. I don't care how you want to lie to yourself because of the small, small, shaken, shaken crops they give to you. Crops they give to you. Truth will remain truth. What we have in Nigeria is Anglo Caliphate rule. <clears throat> That's what we have. It's not democracy. You can continue to lie to yourself. I said, you know, Morocco, I say, Pardon, we are here. We're on the seat waiting for you. When you're done deceiving yourself, you come to the table for discussion. They saw the Nigerian Biafra war that they caused because it wasn't our people that caused it. It wasn't the Juku that caused it. For those that are lying to you, they caused the war from beginning to the end. They planned it caused it, executed it, and are benefiting from it till today. They saw it as an opportunity to permanently take over the ancestral lands and the resources of the indigenous peoples trapped in Nigeria. Guess who is suffering now? The Nigerians. You chose ignorance, right? You will continue to cry. 
Because that's the word of God. He said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If you don't suffer, then God is lying. You must suffer and suffer and suffer until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Because where is the truth? I want to embrace truth now. I'm tired of lies. I'm tired of propaganda. Please. Please now. People should teach us. Tell us the things so that we will learn. Now you go tired. Because those agents of the colonial masters are with you. Whether they call themselves, whether Britain, Germany, Spain, Spain, Italy, Portuguese, their ancestors use people to colonize. They use colonized people. The people that are ruling over, they use them to fight and defend imperialism. And they're still using them till today. Imperialism is still going on. Colonialism and neocolonialism, whatever I call it, is the same thing. They just keep giving it different names. Whatever I call it, it's still going on in Africa. But guess what? They are not there physically. What you call independence is not independence. They just handed over to that local agent that they will use as a puppet from their Buckingham Palace to control you. So why is it that P2B is going to Buckingham Palace? Why is it that uh, uh, illegitimate Tinubu had to go to Buckingham Palace to get power? Why is it that people in the Africa, uh, the, the puppets in the, uh, um, uh, Africa, uh, uh, what that, um, Francophone countries, they have to go to Paris to get power? <laughs> Why do they have to do that? Ask yourself now. Those ones, when they're doing their own election, do they come to your village to collect power? <laughs> Because you are, they are colony. You are still colonized. Africa is not free yet. Imperialism is going on. Colonization is still full time, full blown. It's going on. So now in 2023, the Western imperial powers are at it again. Those that have refused, when they read Bible, you refuse. You don't want to understand. You say, no, Bible is white man narrative, which is a lie. He told you that they stole it. They stole the word of God like they stole everything. Yeah, it's the white man that stole it. They didn't write it. Yes, yeah, they didn't write it. Our ancestors wrote them in scrolls. They picked them up, compiled them, owned it, stole it like they stole every other thing. There's no way they can do anything. That They're they incapable, my dear. Get They're it incapable. That's this level of wickedness. The level of wickedness that's like they are incapable of knowing God or writing anything that God wrote or no, they're incapable. So those of you that are saying that thing is part of you not knowing your identity. You have lost your identity. So these people, whether they use whether it's Bible that we are talking about or whatever it is, their target is no. They want to use their power. To do what they want to do, but they will use the puppets in your land. You are allowing it because you're ignorant. You don't want to learn. We come here every Saturday trying to teach you. No, you won't want to learn. You would rather go and watch those that are opening their private parts to you to distract you. Because why? You're still a slave. Slaves don't know how to read and write. That's why they kept them. So that they will not be able to read and write. But you can move from that slavery uh, point to become for to become a son and a daughter. Because a son and a daughter will want to get educated, understand what happened to his or her ancestors, and know what is happening so that he or she can fix things. That's what a, a, a true daughter or a true son will do. In 2023, today, 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 they are pushing Nigerian illegitimate presidents through ECOWAS chiefs, um, chief, chiefs of staff into war with 14 other African countries and their allies. Those things that people put, they wrote it in the Bible, you didn't read it, so you don't know that it happened. The, the history books, the correct history books that you should read, you didn't read, you don't know. Today, is happening in your face. This our God is so wonderful. The things that you deny, they told you to read, you didn't read, you don't want to read. But it's happening today. Those things we have been saying that happened before, and they will be lying to you when we are telling you the truth. Somebody say, oh, you're not living according to the truth of your name. Your name is daughter of truth. You're not living according to the name because you want me to speak lies. No. 
The lie that is in your head is not the truth. That is the propaganda of the enemy. If you want to learn truth, come here and learn truth. But if you refuse to learn truth, the truth is going to happen. There's going to be a repeat. So they are pushing these puppets. Go look at it now. To go into war with 14 African countries that are saying we don't want slavery anymore. You see what happened in Russia and Ukraine, and it's still happening. The way they treated you people in that Russia, Ukraine, is a child's play. Nigerians, you know you're scattered all over the world. You're scattered all over in Africa. If you people allow these puppets to do what they're planning to do, guess who will suffer? It is you. Nigerians, you will suffer. You see, the prophecy of a man's act, you say the suffering will be seven times. What you're suffering now is even a nice play. Because right now, you're suffering in Nigeria, but your children that are in abroad are bringing money to cushion. But by the time these puppets will do what they're planning to do, those children abroad will be looking for how to come home to meet you. They will not be seeing money to give you. Hey, you take sand, you eat, you feed sand. See, you're doing that, you're not hearing. Your ear is closed, right? By the time you start hearing Nigeria must go, it's not more Ghana must go. Nigerians must go. You will know that the action has started. Right now, continue to pretend. Nigerians stand the danger of being slaughtered like flies everywhere all over the world. You see the xenophobia you saw in the South Africa? That one was just sample. If you allow this, your illegitimate president, that you are thinking he's clueless. He's not any clueless, so he's just being used. If you allow him to push you people, those military people that are always wearing uniform, it's not even uniform. What is that thing they're wearing? Is a is that one is not uniform now, it's costume. Military costume uh, <laughs> that's um their party uniform. You are wearing uniform and your brain is not working. They want to push you to go and fight war that you have no business with. I hope you have written will for your families. What is giving your interim president, that interregnum president, that illegitimate president, what is giving him the audacity to commit this type of atrocity that he's committing? Just ask yourself. You're seeing him now do it. Somebody say he's clueless. He's not clueless. This is how you people were saying that Buhari was clueless. Everybody that comes, he says clueless. Everybody says he's clueless. Nobody, none of them is clueless. As na one no no na 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 the center of the road, the bird that is in the center of the road dancing. Somebody's in the bush beating for that person. That's the that's where they are puppets. The 1999 constitution is what is giving them giving your interim, your uh, illegitimate president the audacity to do what he's doing over you. Like we saw in the Nina's video, that all the misery you're going through, all the torments, everything that you have gone through and you're still going through, and you still go through tomorrow, is because of this colonial document called the 1999 Constitution. And all we're saying is, help us, let's bring it down. Please go to the next slide. So, they are echoers. We don't need to serve as uh, terrorists and as carries in 2023. Sincerely, the people of Africa. You see, that's the map of Africa. We are one people. We can live together. God has blessed us with resources, enormous resources, intellectual, people, everything. We have everything we need to be the people that God has called us to be. We are only being misruled or sold out by the colonial puppets. And like Brother Tony said in that video, those puppets are your brothers, they are in your village, they are in your homes, they are in your families. Call them for conversation because a time will come where there will not be. <laughs> it won't be conversation anymore. It will be telling more. And if people that don't understand you, please ask them what is telling more. You know, when the spirit is flogging you, that's when it will go to. So somebody will say, What do we do? 
separate yourself from the enemies of the people. That's what Ninas is saying. Anyone still swearing to uphold the 1999 constitution, because that 1999 constitution is the source of everything, we're not just only Af uh, Nigerians, but the entire black race. Africa as a whole, that 1999 constitution is the source of what we're going through. Why? Because it's tying down the so-called giant of Africa, hmm. locking down all her resources and potentials, keeping over 350 very powerful ethnic nations incapacitated in the hands of lunatics called politicians. Try. Ninas is therefore calling on the indigenous peoples to separate themselves from the enemies of the people. Like in the time in the Bible, when Moses said, separate yourself from Korah and their children. Separate yourself because the earthquake that will swallow these evil politicians is doing press up in heaven and it's coming. These are the people swearing to defend and uphold that document of covenant. Separate yourself from them. Separate yourself from them. Because in the days of hell, it's going to be hot. Because things are moving, like we don't even know where it's coming from. We're just saying it. But Ninas is like Ark of Noah. Those that have read their Bible. Built to take children of God safely to London so that they do not die. So that when the flood will come, they will be preserved. The flood is coming. It is coming. But you can be safe. Those of you doing one freedom fighting, whatever, dancing jamboree, you are deceiving the people, duping them. We have expiry date too. Umada, we are telling you, we have expiry dates. Stop what you're doing. Begin to embrace what Nina is doing right now. Before you cry, Anyama Anyamo, don't say we did not warn you. We have warned you. Please go ahead. Sorry that I took too much time. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Um, so here is our five points agenda summary. Uh, the first one is an acknowledgement of grave constitutional grievances raised in the union dispute, an express commitment to decommission the imposed 1999 constitution, which is what is holding you hostage. We want to emphasize that it's not your mother, it's not your sister, it's not your neighbor. Is that place, that 1999 constitution that is being used to run that place? That is holding you hostage. The third one is an express commitment to shelf for the national election because, as you can see, we went to election, nobody won, but they uh, a, and a candidate or a winner in March, and they are forcing it on you. So now you have an illegitimate president that did not win the uh, what is it called the votes of the people, but he's there taking charge and actually trying to bring war for you guys. An invitation to the constituent peoples of Nigeria to work on modalities for transitioning arrangements, including mandate time frame membership and as narrow matters. And last but not least, announcement of a bound, a two a time bound, two stage transitioning process, which shall in the first stage feature multi regional referendums to allow the constituent components to recommit or opt out of the union. And in the second, these two terms of union, as may be dictated by the outcome of the referendums. So please take a picture of this. This is what we need your fake politicians to take care of. This is what we need to do to move forward. This is what we need to build a nation that our children will thrive in. Without any of this, you can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, nothing will change. Without us taking that 1999 constitution, you can call God all you want, nothing will change. Without us insisting that this hell called 1999 unit three fake constitution, if we do not remove it, that we have decided that we want no progress. So of course, our announcement will say that at a later time, we are going on with the spotlight on the wisdom of our ancestors. As usual, we know we love our ancestors. Oh, I found out, I saw my great, 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 great. Hmm? No, great, great. Is it great, great? Anyway, one of those people. <laughs> I saw <laughs> <one of> my <laughs> great. 
Yeah. I, saw, I, I saw one of my great great grandfather. Yeah, was, looking you know, so handsome. Yeah. Looking so handsome. I'm like, damn, that's why I look so good. Anyway, yes, so Apple good. did not fall far from the tree at all. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't. So, you know, we love, love our ancestors. We know they are smart, they are kind, they are wonderful, they are everything that we've always imagined, not what was told by the church or their colonial uh, partners, because they will tell you, oh, go destroy everything in your household, destroy, you will be destroyed, this one, destroy that one, your ancestral causes. No, it's the westernization causes. That's where we should be focusing on. Our ancestors are nice. We are going to celebrate their ingenuity. We are going to thank them for the path that they have illuminated for us. We are going to honor their innovations because they had things in place. They had things in place. They had hierarchy in place. They had how you take care of the women, how you take care of the yes. children, how you take care of the widows. Do you know in our land that after planting, we leave food in the farm for poor mm. people to be able to eat? Mm. We are all, we are, we are buru buru for better yes. life. We are well-rounded until we allow the criminal to come and sow a spirit of discord and sow those lies and change everything about who we are. So we are here to reclaim it back and pay homage to the creativity of our ancestors. My yep. sister, carry yep. on. Yep. Thank you. So today we are looking at Obi. Some people call it Obu, you know, in Igbo household. Help me show the picture, just the next slide before we go back to this one. So you see it. So this is the old design and this is the modern design. So um, people already, some people are listening and paying attention and are going back to review their OB. So give them kudos, kudos, you know, because it must be done. It must be done. So let's tell you the purpose of Obu and what it's all about. It is the first house in the household or the family compound of the first or elder son of every Igbo family. Yes, they must always have it. So it, please, if you go to your family, the main family, and your Obu or OB, has gone down. Go and begin to rebuild it. I hope my woman are listening to me. Um, Uncle Charles, um, all of you, Charlie, all of you, you know yourselves. Go and check if I will be in our family, if it's not up to date. I know the one in my town, they have gone to rebuild that one. Please go and rebuild it. So they'll tell you what it is all about. So it's usually in the center or kind of detached from the living area or the main house, the OB that we're talking about. It is where family members assemble and embrace their spiritual connections. We told you that our people knew God before even Christianity came. They we are speaking to their God and they were connected to their God. So this we could say maybe it was like a church in those days because we didn't, in that time we didn't have churches. So they had a place where they come together for their children, their family members, and everything to connect with their spirituality. There are so many things that happen inside there. We will tell you some of it. The time is too short to break it down more. So it's where the head, the OB is where the head of the family worships his God every morning. God the creator. Every morning, the head of the home goes there, he will make intercession for his family members, wherever they are scattered. He will consult his ancestors, pay homage, pour libations where necessary and when necessary. It's the same place where he receives guests of honor and significance as the man of the house. One, this whole thing is one of the practices, practices, that link Ndibu to the Judeo cultural tradition. Yes, you heard me right. In the Bible, this obi is called tent of meeting or tent of congregation or tabernacle, dwelling place of God. Anyone inquiring of God will go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. That's in Exodus 33. 7 to 11. When we tell you that the Old Testament is a record of Igbo culture, go to Leviticus, go to Deuteronomy, we know what we are saying. So for those that be brainwashed by the colonial masters to reject 
what they are, the work of their ancestors. You are doing the double the work of the colonial masters again. That's what you're doing, just because of ignorance. This obi houses the family or clan or kindred or community or town totems, what we call totems. In Anibu, each family, clan, community, they have totem. The totem, where I come from, I am a adag. Our totem is lion. So sometimes when you hear me talk, you, you know you know that <laughs> you will begin to hear the algo, algo rolling in the background. You, know how it's like that. <laughs> you understand how it's like that. So please um, <laughs> forgive me when that aspect comes out. But you see, there's a reason why it's so. I can tell you the stories of my ancestors. So I am an adag. We are umag. That's the totem. So in that obi, the totem will be in there. And then there will be other ancestral holy objects. You have me right. And significant cultural and traditional items. Like those that read Bible. You see where God built the Ark of Covenant. He told them to put a, a, a plate of manna in it. The budded staff of Aaron. He told them to keep it inside there. Even when they trekked, when he parted the Jordan. When he parted River Jordan. And they passed through it. He told them to pick stones. Stones of remembrance from the floor of River Jordan to keep it in that act, to remind, remind so that the next generation, when they see, they say, where did this come from? And they were able to, evidence, they will show them, this is what happened, this is what, because they know that people will come that will be very ignorant and they will not want to embrace truth. So in our OB, families have some of these um, ancient things or things that remind them of maybe the wars that they fought and how God delivered them significant things that happen, they keep them in those places. So it's also where family members come together for Holy Communion. Yes, you heard me right. <laughs> we had Holy Communion in Igbo culture, and we still have it. We use cola nuts and alligator pepper and palm wine for our own Holy Communion. The same essence, so that the people will come together and eat and commune as members of one family. If you have Holy Communion with your family member, you will not poison them, you will not kill them, you will not dupe them, you will not do all the nonsense to them. You will not rape them. That's why in our original culture, we don't have men, women being raped up and down, you know? The men in the family will protect. If I tell you how one of my uncles slapped one guy for just touching me, he didn't even beat me up. He just called my name and touched my shoulder to call my attention. I didn't know my uncle was somewhere watching what was going on. He knew I wasn't, like, this guy was bothering me. He just landed him one hot slap and told him to go. <laughs> they don't joke with us, so. Those that do oh, family uh, feminization, women this, equal. We are protected. Women in Igbo land are treasured. Our fathers, brothers, uncles, they don't play with us. Go and read the Bible and see what the children of Jacob did to those that raped their sister. That's the type of thing Igbo men would do to you if you violate their children or their women in those days. So we are saying this thing so that people can go and connect back to our identity and stop all this madness that is going on. So the family and clan meets to discuss issues of great importance in Ubi. They meet there to settle quarrels and to reach agreements and sometimes take oaths Yes, if they take oath and say, okay, you and I, this is what we agree. They will break cola. That is why I call it Holy Communion. They will eat it together. If you violate it, <laughs> if you violate that agreement, <laughs> you are in trouble. You don't even know what will happen to you. That's why evil was very, was not common in those days. Because people feared, then they would say they were fearing the land. But they didn't know is the owner of the land. God is the owner of the land that planted them in that land. And they say, mm -hmm. if you misbehave, I will remove you. So that's the meaning of how we revered. That's how it came, us revering the land. So usually, um, young women, especially if they're in certain, you know, that time of the month, are not allowed into Ubi. Because that time of the woman time, we call it unso, like you are kept somewhere, like holy, separate. That's what it is. We don't play with that time of the month for women. They are not even allowed to touch any other thing in the house or cook or do anything. They just stay 
in their well. When they are done, you don't violate them. You don't go there bothering them. When they are done, they clean up, cleanse themselves, and then move. So they are not so um, they, they are not allowed to enter the obu. There's another. If I explain that one, it's another thing. And then um, it's and especially it's in some families where you have strong, they have strong, strong powers because he's residing in that place. You remember when um, Moses finished the meeting with God, he came out of the tent of meeting. The Bible said that his face was so glorious that people were like, my God, cover your face. He was shining and everything. So it's a meeting place with divinity. So please, um, if you have not uh, restored your obi in your village, in your family, in your village, or begin to plan towards it. It doesn't need to cost uh, um, so much. It's just according to what you can afford. Don't go uh, doing competition. I know you both people like competition a lot. When you tell them to do one, now, this one will build it with gold. This one will build with silver. No, just use wood. Build somewhere and make it. I actually like that old design, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, my sister. Thank you so much for joining us. We are uh, um, happy continue to help us to share and like and subscribe. We want our people to get this uh, information. Thank you to our brother Dan Emeka Ukere. Thank you for joining us. Our sister for La Shade. For La Shade. For La Shade, yes. For La Shade. Mommy, you know her. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Sylvester Kokwo Ifechi. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week. Thank uh, you. Continue to help us to share this information. Like we reminded you guys earlier on Nina's ninavoice.org, we have plenty of videos for uh, teaching purposes as well as the YouTube channels. Uh, they are there for your learning um, purposes as well. So until next week, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.